When the G23 series first arrived at showrooms, critics were questioning BMW's intentions for this sports stand, wondering why does it look so different than the prior generation, especially with the kidney grills, which has been a topic of discussion for quite some time now, but also the rear fascia as well. It also seemed as though that BMW was moving in a whole new direction. And now in 2022, and we can look back on this, BMW has taken some major leaps and risks, not only when it comes to the designs of their cars, but also the M performance line, because enthusiasts and purists have not been too happy seeing that M badge on a lot of cars that are not the M3, M4, or M5. But now in 2022, everything is beginning to make sense, especially for the M340i. Today, I'm sitting next to the 2023 model, which is the LCI facelift. And I gotta be honest, this car looks striking, especially in Brooklyn Gray. But also, now this car looks the part. It looks upscale, looks luxurious, looks performance oriented, but also the interior layout with the new technology really fits this car quite well. And in this video, we're gonna take a deep dive into the 2023 model, check out all the features that this car comes equipped with, also see how it compares to the prior model year, and also see why if you are looking at buying a sports sedan that is one step above the 330i Audi A4 or Mercedes-Benz C-Class, then maybe taking a look at the M340i might be a great decision. Now, before we get in this video, I wanna give a huge shout and thank you to Herb Chambers BMW Sudbury in Sudbury, Massachusetts for allowing me to use review. The link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive BMW inventory. Also, before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you're notified every time a new video goes live on the channel. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. In today's automotive world, branding is everything. Where the M, AMG, and S badges from the big three German manufacturers are far more prevalent in 2022 than they were at the beginning of the 21st century. Regardless of the reservations purists had with the usage of that M badge on cars without true M engines, it was fairly obvious that BMW needed a sub-brand that consumers could recognize as being a direct competitor to the Audi S4 or SQ5, and that's where the M performance line really set the tone for BMW heading into the 2020s. The G20 M340i, not only outwardly, but mechanically, arrived in 2019 as a better equipped car than the F3340i to take on the challengers and rivals who established themselves as legitimate performance vehicles for buyers who couldn't afford a BMW M3 or Mercedes-Benz C63. But the question that everyone continues to bring up is whether the M340i is not only the best car in this market, but if it's done enough, to not tarnish or diminish the legacy of the M badge. Starting off with pricing, the 2023 BMW M340i xDrive comes in at $56,850. And as the alphanumeric badge suggests, it's the middle of the road 3 series, where it's sportier and more dynamic than a 330i, but not as hardcore of a sedan as the M3. Today, some could claim that the era of luxury sports sedans is coming to an end, as Americans, for the most part, have moved on to larger vehicles. But between Audi and BMW, there's two cars that continue on the tradition and soul of the predecessors and legendary sedans long forgotten. With the G20 being such a departure from the F30, it could be fair to say that back in 2019, the design was considered controversial. But now with the LCI facelift for the 3 Series, and more specifically the M340i, this luxury sedan has been elevated in stature and demeanor, where many of the cosmetic features now resemble the larger 5 Series. Despite not being a complete overhaul by any means, the minor alterations to the front bumper and LED headlights go a long way in preserving the legacy of the 3 Series. Further enhancing the aesthetic upgrades, our model is equipped with a shadow line package, adding gloss black trim to the kidney grills that match the accents found throughout the front fascia and side air curtains. Rather than simply being seen as an entry-level luxury sports sedan, for 2023, this car looks mature, and a lot of that can be attributed to the inverted L-shaped daytime running lights, but also the sharper body lines that are immediately noticeable as this car approaches you. Moving over to the side profile, 
This M340i is sitting on 19 inch M double spoke bicolor jet plaque wheels that gives the sedan an even more commanding presence. But 18s do come standard with a shadow line package. Thanks to the adaptive M suspension, you can have a firmer ride quality for when you travel on back roads. Or with the press of a button, you can interchange to a softer and more comfortable setting during road trips. Standard are gloss black folding side mirrors with turn signal indicators to go along with blind spot detection for added safety. Then making our way around to the rear fascia, subtle changes for the LCI model keeps the M340i looking fresh with a more pronounced gloss black rear diffuser and reshaped trapezoidal exhaust outlets. Much like we saw from the 5 series, the rear third does have a muscular roll presence, but also the alterations that were made to the 3 series once again mimics its larger sibling. Lastly, a gloss black deck lid spoiler continues on the color contrasting that can be found throughout the exterior. And overall, the M340i for 2023 looks both dynamic yet classy, and most importantly, distinguishable from the prior model year. Under the hood, the M340i is powered by a 3-liter turbocharged inline 6-cylinder engine, producing 382 horsepower and 368 pound-feet of torque and is paired with a ZF 8-speed automatic transmission. In regards to what's considered a true M car or not, the B58 motor that powers this sports sedan is not only tested and proven, but it's highly respected among enthusiasts and consumers, where for the price point, you're receiving a powertrain that provides character, soul, and arguably one of the best performance packages out there for a six-cylinder. Then factor in the ZF8 Speed's quick and responsive gear shifts and BMW's emphasis on handling and cornering capabilities and you have a car that can outperform rivals in many aspects besides straight line speed. Our model today does have BMW's xDrive all-wheel drive system, but real-wheel drive does come standard. For fuel economy, you're looking at right around 23 miles per gallon in the city and 32 miles per gallon on the highway. Stepping inside, we're greeted by power adjustable, heated sent to tech seats for both the driver and passenger, with the driver's side being two position memory for added convenience. For those looking for additional comfort, merino leather upholstery is optional. However, these seats are aggressively bolstered to keep you in place, and more importantly, they're supportive. Better yet, the Tacoa red interior color adds a really nice color contrast on this model especially when paired with the Brooklyn Gray exterior. The LCI facelift is rather substantial for the interior, as immediately you'll notice the new digital gauge cluster, head unit, dashboard layout, and the minor alteration to the gear shifter, which can now be found in the newer BMW products, such as the iX and X7. Compared to the prior model year, the display is more immersive, where you can customize the layout to your liking but also the resolution and quality makes it easier to read, and similar to what we experience from other German competitors. With each drive mode comes a different theme and ambient lighting on the screen, and by using the buttons mounted on the steering wheel, you can scroll up and down to showcase information that's relevant to you. For this M340i, we do have a head-up display with traffic sign recognition to help keep your eyes on the road ahead. Then moving over to the infotainment system, this is BMW's updated iDrive 8 user interface that was first seen on the i4 and iX. While you can use a touchscreen if you so desire, BMW still gives drivers a rotary dial and quick access buttons, which we find to be more intuitive when navigating through the wide range of menus. You'll have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility to go along with onboard navigation and equipped on this MP40i is the $875 Harman Kardon surround sound system to amplify the audio of your favorite music. You're going to notice that all your climate control settings are now placed on the touchscreen with a dedicated menu where you can adjust the temperature or turn on the heated seats. As with most new BMW products, when selecting your drive mode, you can also individualize your driving experience, not only in sport, but also Eco as well. And since this empty 40 i does have the adaptive M suspension, you can ride in comfort while still using some of the more aggressive settings available. 
With the addition of the $700 parking assistance package, we have the 3D surround view camera to go along with the top view and rear backup camera with trajectory. And we also have front and rear parking sensors. Below, there'll be a row of buttons with a physical dial for the volume and also your front and rear defrosters. As we return to the center console, there will be a cubby for a smartphone. And while not present on this MP40i, you can opt for a wireless phone charging pad. For the center storage compartment, you'll have enough room for smaller items and you'll also have a USB-C input. And rounding out the front seating area, above will be a power moonroof to let in some natural light to the interior. Quickly taking a look at the second row seating area, we're going to set off on the passenger side. And this seat has been adjusted all the way back and somewhat on a recline. And I still have a few inches of legum to work with here. I do believe that if you have average size adults sitting in the second row, that they should be comfortable because when it comes to that leg, shoulder, and headroom, it is quite accommodating in here. It's more spacious than what we see in the Genesis G70, but also this would be on par with the Audi S4. One thing I do want to take note of though, is that these second row seats do sit a bit lower to the ground to maximize that headroom, but also they recline a bit. Of course, you can't adjust them, but you can sit back and relax a bit on a longer drive. What I also noticed too is that with the outboard seats, the bolstering is somewhat aggressive. So if your driver is on some winding back rows and showcasing what this car can do, you can hold on tight and feel very secure. Now moving on to the center seat, the center hump is very aggressive, so I think that will take away some of the legroom and the capabilities of trying to fit that third person back here. And that is no surprise for a car in this segment. I felt that way with the S4, the G70, and also the C-Class as well. So this is really par for the course. And also, I do believe that if you are looking for a more family-friendly option, you might want to go with that 5 Series. But if you have a smaller family or you're just using this as your daily commuter, I think this car is more than spacious when it comes to the interior. And then for the driver's side, this seat is adjusted a bit further up. And I have a lot of legroom here. So for someone at my header on 5'5", I think all around we can be very comfortable. Average size adults should have no problem either. But if you do have people on the height of 5'9", 5'10", possibly even 6 feet tall, they might be hitting their head on the headliner. But that's not what this car has been designed to do. Also back here, you do have two rear air vents to go along with climate control, two USB-C inputs, and rounding out the second row seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. And then coming around to the back, behind the second row seats, you're looking at right around 13 cubic feet of room to work with, which is better than the Genesis G70 and also the Cadillac CT4 V series. And it's pretty much identical with the Audi S4 and also the Mercedes-Benz C43. I was able to fit all my camera gear today, no problems. So that's two bags of gear, a gimbal box, and a tripod. However, I did notice some of the limitations that you're gonna have with a car of this size. So you could probably fit three to four travel cases if you are going on a road trip with the family or a significant other, but it is gonna get quite tight back here if you start loading up additional items. So just keep all of that in mind. Then on both sides of the rear cargo area, you will have some side pockets for some smaller items, such as a first aid kit or car detail equipment to keep this car looking nice and clean. You're also gonna notice the quick release latches that will unlock the second row of seats. So when you are loading this vehicle up with more equipment, you can do so very easily and conveniently without using too much effort at all. But ultimately, when it comes to the interior spacing, but also the overall practicality of this car, I don't know what else you could possibly ask for because this is exactly what we see across the board for a lot of sedans in this market. And now for the most important part of this review, let's go on that test drive.
That sounds so good. Now for 2023, BMW really didn't make any changes to the mechanical side of things for the M340i. So you still have 382 horsepower, you still have the ZF8 speed automatic transmission. Now they did drop in a mild hybrid system which does give you 11 horsepower boost but that doesn't show up on the stat sheet. So you're probably going to notice that with the 2023 model it's going to ride a bit more smoothly but also it's going to be a bit more efficient as well. So with that performance exhaust, this is going to be a pretty fun test drive, probably too addicting as well, because they've really done an amazing job with their exhaust systems. I remember when the M340i first arrived back in 2020, you had that exhaust note with the burbles, and they really kind of went away from that for the newer models around 2021, 2022. But this right here is fantastic. Now we have to discuss how the MT40i, when it did arrive, there were a lot of people, specifically purists, that were up in arms. Like, oh my gosh, they're diluting the M brand, the M badge. And now that time has gone on, now that we have a whole line of M performance models that I think is really the sweet spot. That is really, I think, the best line that BMW has. Even though we're gonna say the M3, M4, X5M, X3M, it's this right here, this mid-tier that goes up against the Audi S line and the AMG line. This to me, I think, is the most harmonious performance vehicles that, are out, that is out there right now, up against the Germans and even some of the Japanese and Korean brands that are out there. This just seems to be what the ultimate driving machine was all about and really still is. But to be the ultimate driving machine, they had to give better performance, better handling, and a bit more of an engaging driving experience to their sedans and their crossovers that didn't have the real M badge. And even though I think purists are still gonna complain, this is really where BMW, I think, is at their finest and at their best because the ZF 8-speed automatic transmission that's paired with the B58 motor, the inline six, I think it's really the best powertrain and best transmission out there on the market without question. I mean, you have a car that is not only relatively affordable with a price tag starting around $58,000, but you have the all-wheel drive system. You also have nice interior comforts as well. So with the redesign, you have the full digital gauge cluster that's now connected to the 14 and a half inch touchscreen. And this all begins to make sense. I think when we first looked at the new three series, the G20, you could tell right away that it was not gonna be like any of its predecessors. It wasn't gonna be like the F30. It wasn't gonna be like the E90 or E92. This was gonna be something brand new for BMW. And it really set the tone for where this manufacturer has gone over the last three to four years. You now have a lineup up and down the aisle, whether it's the 330i, M340, a 540i, an X3, M40i, that is just all about the driving experience, the handling, the stiffness of the suspension, the weight of the steering. You don't get this from any other brand right now on the market. I think the closest manufacturer, especially at this tier, would be Audi with the S4, SQ5, and the S line. But what you are gonna notice with those cars is that the steering doesn't give you as much feedback, but also there's not as much struggling with the wheel. If I'm an enthusiast and I want to have some fun, I want to have the car give me some trouble when it comes to driving around on the corners and the back roads. I want to fight the car a bit more. I want to have that feedback. And I don't think Audi really gives you that at all. It's too smooth of a car. And I think that's where enthusiasts and also BMW purists would never leave the BMW brand. They're gonna stick with BMW because really this new generation of performance cars has really done a great service to what the M performance and just the M badge in general is all about. You also have an exterior design that's very reminiscent to the new 5 Series or the LCI, which came out back, I believe, in 2020. And now this car looks very upscale and classy. And I think that's what BMW wanted to do. Because if you remember the prior generations, especially the mid-2010s, 
BMW really was moving away from being a very fun and performance-oriented brand. I, I don't know exactly what their thought process was back then, but it seems as though now with where the BMW lineup is today, you now have a brand that can give you both a luxurious interior, comfortable driving dynamics, a really nice suspension, all that refinement, but best of all, you also have that performance not only in the straight line with this car giving you a zero to 60 time of around four seconds, but also you have that great handling that again, we just don't see a lot at this price point. <laughs> Instant gear shifts, the crackle of the exhaust, but also you get that pushback in your seat. So it's almost like a opera. It's, it's a whole experience. You're, you're really fully immersed behind the wheel of this car. And that's really all you could ask for, for a sports sedan that does not, that is not an M3 and is not a true M car by purest standards. But that's the reason why I feel that this particular line, this particular mid tier for the German manufacturers is the best in this market, and really, I think the best as a whole, even excluding the German manufacturers. So let's see what the coring ability is like. On the brakes, nice and strong. Oh, no body roll there, that's beautiful. Now we do have the M suspension, so we have the adaptive M suspension on this model. So in comfort mode, it's like riding a cloud and in sport mode, it stiffens up and it gives you the firmness that you're looking for in a car like this. So let's put it in comfort mode one last time. And it does soften up along with the steering wheel as well. So if you are looking for a comfortable daily driver, you also have that as well with the M340i if you get the adaptive M suspension. So let's get into how the BMW MT40i compares to its closest competitors and if the LCI update does enough to keep this car at the top in its segment. Now, I think its closest competitor really is the Audi S4. That's, I believe, the only sports sedan that you could really maybe go back and forth on if you are seriously looking at buying a sports sedan at this price point. The only reason why I really give the BMW M340i the lead in that comparison is because it's not just the straight line speed, it's not just the ZF8 speed automatic transmission or this amazing B58 inline six cylinder engine. It's also the handling, it's the steering feel, it's even the steering wheel being beefy with the 10 and two positions, but also very supportive at the nine and three positions. This car just feels like a like a baby M car. It's not gonna give you the same experience as an M3, but it's still gonna give you the stiffer handling and also a tighter suspension that I just feel as though is geared more towards an enthusiast rather than somebody who's looking for a more powerful Audi A4 that is a bit more sporty but still leans more towards the luxury, luxury side. Whereas the M340i takes a lot of the elements that we see from the 330i, but puts that on steroids where this car is all around enjoyable but also the car is more responsive as well on those winding back roads it's a car that you're never going to get tired of driving it's a car that is really i think the best value in the lineup if you are looking for a performance car from bmw that's also brand new and i still believe that this is a better daily even though bmw now offers x drive for the m3 and m4 I just feel like this is more of a sensible option where if you are on that stricter budget and you can't go, you can't max out to about 80 or $90,000, this right here is a great alternative where it doesn't feel as though you're compromising. And then finally getting to Mercedes-Benz and how the MP40i goes up against a C43. I believe that Mercedes-Benz purists, specifically for AMG, they love the V8 and the 63 and they just can't bring it to themselves to lower their standards to the C43. You don't really see as many C43s as M340i's, which is why I feel that BMW still has a great offering here and actually probably will for the next, maybe the next five to seven years because this is exactly what you want to see from a mid-tier offering where you have pretty much a car that 
I think it doesn't feel as though you cheapened out at around fifty-eight or six thousand dollars. I actually think you're getting far more than what the price tag suggests. And on top of that, you have a car that now looks very luxurious, but also has the driving dynamics to give you the best of both worlds, where some brands kind of lean more towards one side over the other. But also, I love the interior layout as well now with the conjoining screens. It just feels as though this car makes more sense now, that this generation makes more sense, and also fits the vision that BMW designers had when this car first came out back in 2020. So ultimately, after this quick test drive, this just reinforces what I said about this car back in 2020, where it's the perfect one car solution, but also it's, I think, the perfect car in the lineup. It gives you everything you could possibly want, gives you the comfort, the performance, but also it gives you a price tag that maybe for some of you doesn't break the bank, but also a car that I think at its price point is providing a lot of the intangibles that we just don't see from competitors right now in 2022. So to wrap up my time with the 2023 BMW M340i, what are my final thoughts and takeaways for this luxury sports sedan, and more specifically, the LCI facelift itself? Because mechanically, nothing has changed for this car, but one thing I wish I said during the test drive is that with the B58 and the ZF8 speed, you have a very linear power band to work with, where it's very smooth when you are accelerating, but what I do love, though, is you have that engagement when you are upshifting and downshifting. It makes this car really enjoyable all around, but also feels very similar to what we see from other BMW products. Then transitioning to the exterior, I love what BMW has done for the LCI model where the front and rear fascias now look a bit more like the BMW 5 Series. And because of that, and this is all just perception based, it makes the sedan look a bit bigger than it did for the pre-facelift models, where at certain angles, it really looks like a 5 Series. And I have no problem with that at all whatsoever because I feel as though this car from the outside looks a bit more upscale, even though I think the gloss black trim pieces adds a sportier vibe to this car. It just looks classier now that maybe we didn't have for the prior model year. And when you step inside with the conjoining screens for the digital gauge cluster and the infotainment system, I feel as though for the 3 Series, this interior layout works very well for this sedan. Maybe not so for the bigger vehicles in the BMW lineup. I'm not necessarily sold on the iX and the X7 that I have reviewed earlier this year with the same interior layout, but I feel as though for the 3 Series, this certainly works, and it makes the car feel a bit more tech-driven than it did in the past. But all in all, I feel as though the LCI model makes this car feel a bit more complete to me, where it's not just all about the performance and the driving characteristics anymore. You also have a car that has a nice comfortable interior with technology that you expect to see in this price range and segment. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram, at Boston Auto Blog, so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.